Hi, my name is Claudia Klein, and you're watching the video Measurement of Strabismus, Maddox Wing. The Maddox Wing is an instrument we can use to measure the size of the deviation. However, it is limited in terms of the type of strabismus we can measure. And generally it's used for heterophorias and small uh, manifest deviations. Now, over here to the right, we can see a patient who is holding the Maddox Wing. So the patient's looking through the eyepieces or the eyepiece here, and they're looking towards the plate at the end of the Maddox wing. Down below here, we have a closer uh, view of the plate, and what we see here is that we have a series of numbers in white, which represents the horizontal deviation, and a series of numbers in red, which represents the vertical deviation. And then we also have a white arrow, which uh, is used for the horizontal deviation and a red arrow that's used for the vertical. Over here, it's a bit more difficult to see, but we have a series of lines here that represent the size of the any cyclophoria present, so any torsion that's present. Now, this is one of the advantages of the Maddox wing uh, in that it can measure torsion. The tests we've discussed so far, such as the prism cover test or Krimsky, or tests that utilise prisms in general cannot measure torsion. They're only able to give us the measurement of the vertical and or horizontal deviation, but no information around torsion. Whilst the Maddox twin can do all three, both um, horizontal and vertical and torsion. Okay, so what's happening during testing is that the view of the eyes is separated by the plates of the Maddox wing. We can see here that there's a septum here and a plate here as well. And essentially the right eye will see the arrows whilst the left eye will see the numbers. Let's take a closer look at what's actually occurring as we uh, assess a patient on the Maddox wing. Let's say, for example, we have a patient who has an exophoria on cover test and we then attempt to measure them on the Maddox wing. And let's say that that exophoria is four diopters. Now, when the patient looks through the eyepieces, they will see, as we said, the white, white arrow with the right eye and the numbers with the left eye. Now, when the patient's looking through the eyepieces on the Maddox wing, the dissociation will elicit or bring out that four diopter exo. The patient will see the arrow with the right eye, or the arrow will be projected onto the fovea of the right eye. And the number four, which corresponds to four prism doctors, will project on the fovea of the left eye, given that the eye has rotated outwards by four diopters or two degrees. So because the two fovea have principal visual direction, the patient will end up seeing a four on top of the arrow, or we'll see the arrow pointing to the number four. And this tells you that the patient has a four diopter exo deviation. So the question we ask the patient when using the Maddox wing is, what number is the white arrow pointing to? And then we can ask what number is the red arrow pointing to? Now we need to make a point around the numbers that the patient is looking at. You'll see here uh, my depiction of, of the numbers, and in the exo direction, the numbers are even, and in the eso direction, the numbers are odd. So where a patient says that the arrow is pointing to four, you would assume that the patient has a four diopter exo. However, some patients will tell you it's pointing to the four if it falls between here, the three and the five. And so what you need to clarify with your patient when using the Maddox wing is, is it actually pointing to the four or is it between the three and the five? So make sure you ask that question because it is the difference between documenting that the patient has an exo versus an eso. And that's important in terms of um, measuring the size of the deviation. In relation to torsion, it's a little bit different. Like I said here, we have a lever and all we ask the patient there is to lift that lever and to essentially hold it straight. And they'll either put it at zero, which means there's no torsion, or they'll lift it up or down, which will then tell you how much in cyclo or cyclo 
uh, deviation there is. Here is a closer view of the plate, so you can more clearly see the numbers here. We've got uh, even numbers along here and odd numbers along here. And again here we have even numbers from zero up and odd numbers from zero down. And the torsion, there's no numbers here, we can only just see lines. That long line represents zero and then every line represents one degree of torsion. And so if the patient moves in the up direction, you'll see here it indicates the patient has an in cyclo deviation and if they move it down, it's an ex cyclo deviation. We're actually going to talk more about torsion next semester, but um, again, you need to know that the Maddox wing does uh, provide you with the opportunity to, to measure torsion if it's present. Recording the Maddox wing, we, MW represents Maddox wing. We indicate whether the patient is wearing correction or not, and then we indicate the size of the deviation. So here we have EXO of 10 diopters. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, you'll need to clarify that the, the arrow was actually pointing to the 10 and was not between the 9 and the 11, as an example. Now we have right on left, so there's a vertical deviation of 7 doctors, and here we have excyclo at 4 degrees. Torsion is always uh, measured in degrees. Here we have another recording, a different recording, and we have Maddox swing with correction, and we have an ESO of five prism doctors, and then we have this symbol, which represents that there was no vertical deviation present. So it just clarifies that the question was asked around vertical deviations, um, and the patient's red arrow was sitting on zero. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.